really admire. So it's not just a smash and grab. You're like, no, 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 no. let's no, build no. something with this. Oh yeah, big time. I mean, I haven't even made a dollar on it yet, um, but we've done these like huge events and uh, it's all about kind of signing, you know, working with new artists mm. and putting them on because I had zero music industry connections when I started. And so what I did is just make music in my room all day, every day, and just send out on SoundCloud labels, DM them, uh, send out emails, and then, you know, took me a thousand no's before I got my first yes. What was the break? What was the moment? The moment was defected in 2020 when I signed Deep End. Yeah. Um, Because I sent them probably 60 demos, like 60 days in a row, getting said no every time. And then I sent Deep End at like 11 o'clock at night after I finished it in uh, in uh, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then they responded like an hour later saying like, let's get on a Zoom call now because of course they're UK time. So that was morning them, which is very intense. And they're like, we want to sign this. We want to put this out next week. It's huge. And so my life just like- wow. I started sending it out to people and then Solomon picked it up. And he's like one of my all time heroes. Mm. So that validation was really amazing. And then um, he just started playing it and I met him a couple times and then after i know i think when i sent him the song i met him after in a uh, pacha in uh, ibiza at his night and i walk up to the booth and it's like magic like he turns around he sees me he opens up his arms <laughs> i just walk into those big <laughs> solomon arms i hug him and the first thing he says he grabs my head he's like what a track wow what a track and um <sighs> And then I see him loaded up on the CDJs and it had my original title, which was in Dutch. It was like, it said Murder Obau New 015, like version 15, which means like new build up <laughs> version 15. And he looks at me, he's like, yeah, I'm about to do it to him. And he, he presses play and, you know, the rest is history. And I think he's still playing it. And I like keep sending him new music and... uh yeah, that's like uh, murdered, like did a lot for that connection. Young people trying to break into the music business. What's a piece of advice you'd give an upcoming producer, DJ? You know, you gotta find, you gotta find uh, that, you gotta find that spark that really, that, that signature that really, I, that you can use to identify your music as your own. Finding that, that thing that makes you unique is the, that's your selling point, because they, otherwise you're just blending in with everyone else. So. Um, that, that's, uh, and that's not a bit for anyone, you know, you kind of like, if it, um, don't, don't be, don't be scared of what makes you stand out, um, embrace it. That's your individuality. Before we... My expression was always playing music and cutting music and, and samples, and redoing what people have done. And that's how I got into it. it. It became a technical standpoint. And then obviously later on, the computer became my instrument. And I think that changed the world because all of a sudden you could create music without being a musician, which was pretty incredible. Now I've learned how to play guitar and bass and, you know, piano and you write music differently and I can express myself, but that's, it's taken me 20 years. Now, um, you've evolved, you've grown and now you are Gordo and the energy hasn't changed though. That's still the same. That's still you, right? Uh, nah, yeah, it, ha it hasn't changed. It's just a different, it's just a different vibe. That's all. But I like this new vibe. Yeah, we all grow up, you know? Yeah. We change. And that's why I use the word evolve, not grow. Yeah. Like, because it's still you. It's yeah. still, you know, your origins are still there. This yeah. is always, it's always been you. It's just a, you know, more educated, like musically. Yeah, you, that's actually, that's actually 100% what it is. I just like, I can't, uh, I just, yeah, I, I grew up, you know, I matured and I just, uh, yeah, I evolved into but, this. But this, everyone this does. Thing. Like, look yeah. at Hardwell, for example. Yeah. He's grown up, come back with a new sound. Tiesto isn't doing what he did when he started. Yeah. Who is? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, No, no. If, if, if you want to evolve, you have to, you know, do something different, take a risk. And um, I'm blessed that I did it and, and my fans followed and there's new fans now. And it's just, yeah. It's Tell time. the story as many times as possible because I'm like... Everyone's got their perspective and how it happened. Right. And here's mine. I went and played Vegas in 07, 08, 09, whatever, and I was getting gigs, and I was starting to get paid. And actually, somebody was smart enough at the time when I remember and Move For Me came out to book us together. It was the first time I DJed with Joel, and it was a pain in the ass because he had to have his own mixer and his lemur and all this freaking crap. 
And I was like, this freaking guy he can't just play a freaking record, man. Like, seriously, <laughs> dude. Anyway, <laughs> I laugh about that now. But Wynn came to me in the fall of, end of summer in the fall of 2009. Yeah. Right. He said, hey, we're going to open a pool. And we want to do it like Europe. Like, we want you to play your cool, freaking sexy house music because that's what I was becoming known for at yeah. the time. And we want to charge people money and make it like a whole freaking thing. And we want to have you come like once a month. And I'm like, I have a better idea for you. Because at this point in my life, I had kids. I had my first kid and I was right. getting ready to have my second kid. I was like, I'll come play every single week for you guys. And we'll make it a seasonal residency. No one's done this. Oakenfold had his monthly residency. I'm like, dude, it'll be a seasonal residency. Right. Like Ibiza, like what you're talking about. Because I was flying to Ibiza and flying to all these places at that time. But dude, I was getting yeah. crummy opening sets at Pasha. And I'm like, I'm killing myself to fly halfway across the world. Right. This blows. So when they came to me, I was like, dude, I was all in. I was like, I'm going to fly out there. I flew out there. They showed me the plans for the pool. I'm like, this is going to be bananas. We actually went on the parking garage and looked down, and they're showing me the whole thing, rolled out the plans. I'm like, look, dude, wow. there's 11 weeks between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Let's just freaking slam it. Like, let's do this thing. And they're like, I'm like, let's do Saturday afternoons. They're like, no, no, no. It's going to be geared and based and towards locals because it's local people. Right. Because um, Marillo had that night that he was doing that was on like, Monday of he would do it on the a day after the holiday yeah and it was kind of like because a lot of locals Every year from New York and yeah. Chicago and LA and these places that house music were moving to Vegas right and uh, somebody was doing uh, I forget who it was dude there was like a Wednesday night that was a house night that was kind of cool that was working anyway yeah so I was trying to convince them to do it Saturday because I'm like Saturday afternoon dude, it's a freaking slam dunk you'll get locals you get people from LA the clubs in LA are like eh. Exactly. They're like, no, Sunday. So we do Sundays. I kind of begrudgingly agree to it. We do Sundays. That first Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, when we opened, I wish we had film. We're stuffed 5,000 people in there. Dude, first of all, I just bought my house down here in Orange County because yeah. I couldn't afford LA. So I moved to Orange right. County when I first moved down here. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to pay this. I just bit off more than I can chew. I was seriously like for months not sleeping. I signed that contract. They were paying me at the time, which was like an enormous amount of money. I was like, this is insane. Yeah. I've just changed my life. Fast forward that next year, we open on Memorial Day weekend. There's 5,500 people in that place. And there's probably about 10,000 people lined up on the boulevard trying to get in. And I come down, and these guys, the grins on their faces, I mean, these guys were like, they knew their lives were going to be different. It's undefected, like, right? It's undefected, correct. So why didn't you put that on your own label? Because did they say, right, well, we can have this one? Well, you need to understand that, like, I always wanted to release a song was defected. You know, as a DJ, you have, like, different, you know, goals that you want to achieve in your life. And uh, for me, defected was one of them. Uh, and um, it is my very first release was defected, right? So when I sent them the track and they said they wanted to do it, I was like, well, we're going to do it with them. I'm not going to release on my label. I can release whatever I want on my label, right? So if defected on this one, I give it to them. You don't need beep, You don't need other labels to help you get a beat port smash, though. You're like, you're Mr. Virality right now. So what's it like being on the internet all the time? Be on the internet? You're always, you're always in my streams. You're always in my feeds. I mean, like, I, I think it's beautiful for artists, yeah. you know, because, like, you're becoming more and more independent. I, like, you don't want the middleman in the end, yeah? You don't, want the, you don't want the label, you don't want the, like, the radio guys, the TV. Like, you want to be independent and be able to break a record by yourself. Yeah. And I feel like the social media nowadays, they, they gave us that power, you know? So if you use it well, it's good. It's and good. Uh, I think I kind of, like, find the trick to use it well. You're on, you're, you and James Hype are owning the internet right now. Is that fair to say? Do you see James Hype? Do you see what he does or do you not? Yeah, he's my cousin. So, like, we, <laughs> you know. um, we, we meet, like, every week at the minute. Like, on every show, we're like, bro, like, all the time. So. See, that's what I'm saying. That's what happens. You've, you've carved your own path. Yeah. I, I also think that we were probably, like, maybe two of the most active DJs online during the COVID time, though. Yeah. You know, a lot of no, people... And vintage. And vintage culture, And to vintage be fair. culture, too. But, like... 
like what I mean is like a lot of guys during COVID they were just like relaxing and we were like every day like creating content so yeah. you know like two years after COVID it pays off yeah all right uh, we've got too much to talk about